What's up guys? We are talking big lens today. As you can tell by the title of this video, the Nikkor Z800 millimeter F6.3 VRS base Fresnel Element Super Telephoto Lens for the Z mount. I've been testing this lens with the Nikon Z9. I'm using the Z9 right now to record this review. So if you'd like the video footage you're seeing, it's with the Z9 and the 2470 at 2.8, shot at 2.8 aperture. It's 4K 30, so there's some specs for you. All right, uh, with this video, I am gonna be talking about design, what's inside of it, what's it like to use. I've had it for the past week. I can show you uh, photos, I can show you video samples, I can show you everything. Nikon said, show them all, let them get a chance to see how this lens performs. I even use my Atomos Ninja 5 to record how it autofocuses as well, so I'll be showing that to you later on in this video. So before we kick things off, if you already like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and smash that notification bell because I got a lot more great content coming your way. And also, a big thank you to Nikon Singapore for providing the lens and the Z9 for review. Having said that, these are my thoughts and my thoughts only. So let's get down to talking about design. All right, guys, with the phrase Fresno Element, Lens, as a lot of you know, the size is awesome. And this is right up there with it. Look at the size of this. For an 800 millimeter lens, this is very, very small. As a matter of fact, when you first look at it, you might think to yourself, it looks like a 300 millimeter lens. And you wouldn't be mistaken, but it's actually 800. Again, that Fresnel element allows Nikon to really keep the size small. We saw this with a 300 millimeter back in the day, the 505.6, and now the 806.3. And uh, this is the first Z-mount phase Fresnel element lens, I believe so. So this is really impressive, 800 at 6, 6.3 aperture. Uh, let's also look at the, uh, this lens because one of the things I noticed right off the bat, besides the size, is the gold ring. The gold ring is back, at least for this lens. You know, the S-line lens is here. That's the top of the line for the Z-mount. And that gold ring is a welcomed addition. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I love to see it and hopefully they include it in more lenses coming down in the future because it just signifies quality. When you see that gold ring, you know you're in good hands with Nikon. I mean, all their lenses for the Z-mount have been really good, but it's nice to see that back. Moving on down, we have a various different function buttons towards the end of the lens there, which you can assign different functionality, but you cannot assign VR functionality as of yet, at least at the time of this review. Maybe that'll come in a firmware update to the Z9 or a Z system cameras, but you cannot do so right now. All right, moving on down to the lens here. We've got a customizable ring you can set for ISO or whatever you wanna set it for. And then we go down to the tripod footing here, which is interesting for you uh, Arca Swiss users out there because this is not Arca Swiss compatible. Okay, so you may have to use an adapter or some other means to use that if, you have, if you're an Arca Swiss fan. I'm not, so it doesn't really bother me, but it is something to keep note of. Now, you can remove this footing, but it looks like you're going to need a hex key for that. And I did not remove it for this review. I just kept it there. You can turn this, this uh, tripod ring around, though. It is not clickable. It is very smooth. There is a Kensington lock underneath this um, rubber cap here. So if you want some extra security, you can do that. But I, I mean, I don't think a lot of people will take that extra precaution, but it, it's there if you want to do it. Okay, uh, moving on down to the lens here. We've got a autofocus and manual focus switch. We've got our focal range here from full to about 10 meters. By the way, your minimal focusing distance on this lens is five meters, which is impressive. So yeah, not too bad at all. Um, and then we have our filter drop-in here because you cannot put a filter. Look at the size of this front element. I don't think you're gonna be putting a filter of any sorts in this, but with this drop-in filter, you can do that and it's 46 millimeters here. So keep that in mind. So we also have these uh, strap mounts here. We have two of them, so you can attach a shoulder strap that does come with the lens, mind you. And if you're worried about it, this lens can add a little bit of flex to your camera body. I mean, at least with the Z9, I did not feel it or sense it by any stretch of the imagination. That camera is built like a tank. This lens is built like a tank. And together, they were fantastic. I was walking around the bird park with a peak design strap no issues at all in that regard. Uh, that's pretty much the lens on the outside. Now let's talk about what's inside of this. We got 22 elements in 14 groups, um, f6.3 down to f32. As I mentioned, the minimal focusing distance is five meters and the weight is 2,385 grams. So this is a very uh, relatively lightweight lens for, the, for what it is. Um, the 6.3 aperture is something you're gonna have to take note of, especially in lower light situations. You're gonna have to crank up that ISO. But I will say the Z9 does a great job 
job with ISO performance for the most part, and so, so does the Z6 II and other Z cameras. So it may not be a big deal for you, but if you are one of those photographers that really is particular about your ISO performance and you're gonna need to use this lens in a lower light situation, then of course you probably already have, but invest in let's say a Topaz Denoise or other Denoise software that will help you out. Okay, so that's pretty much the lens in a nutshell. Let's talk about what it's like to use. Now, this lens, 800 millimeters, if you've never used an 800 millimeter lens before, you do need to take in consideration that this is quite limiting. You really need to know your distance from your subjects, how you're going to use this lens. Now, it's not gonna be a lens for everybody, but if you do know your distance, you know when you're gonna need an 800, you're gonna really like how this lens performs. It does focus really fast. It does lock on the subjects really quick. Um, the image quality is beautiful. The separation, it just annihilates the background. I mean, I was really impressed with the IQ coming out of this lens. But if you are a newbie or hobbyist and you want to get into, let's say, birding or wildlife photography, or even sports photography, and you want that, that reach, you're like, should I go for an 800 prime or should I go for a zoom lens? I would opt go for a zoom first, use a teleconverter, then when you understand what, what focal range you really need, then invest into something like this. Even though the price is relatively attractive for this 800, it's still an investment. So I would say start with the zoom first and then go to something like this when you need it. But let's talk about focusing for a second because this is where it was really interesting for me and I'm gonna show you some samples right now out of the Atomist Ninja 5. When it locks on, it's fast, it's really fast. I face subject detection, all works great, it tracks well. I would say my hit rate for the most part was around 90 plus percent but there were some times that for whatever reason it wasn't racking focus and it could be the lens it could be the z9 or it could be user error it could be all those things i tried various different focusing methods i tried various different settings sometimes it just happened it could be because of the, the subject was lost in the background for whatever reason i really don't know uh but it did happen to me a couple times. Anyway, that's it for performance in that regard. So what I'm going to do is show you some sample images and some sample video footage, AKN RAW, to uh, give you an idea of how this lens performs and I'll come back with my final thoughts. So as we saw from the images and the video footage there, I mean, it's impressive. This lens is a beautiful lens and it annihilates the background. Your subject pops, the colors, the sharpness, the detail, it is all there. It is beautiful to see. And I've really enjoyed using this 800 millimeter lens. I really have. And I think for the size, the price, it's a very attractive buy for a lot of Nikon users out there. And it's great to see that uh, Nikon is actually really building out their super telephoto range for the Z mount. I mean, we just had the 402.8 with the teleconverter, this 806.3, and then recently the 404.5. So they're really building that out there. And then of course, with the fantastic 70 to 200, I think for a lot of people, you're pretty much covered in this regard. And I mean, we're waiting for, of course, the 85, the 35, the smaller focal ranges for Nikon to come into play here at the, you know, the faster apertures. But for the super telephotos, they've been doing a fantastic job. And I think for those who do need 800, this is a lens to heavily consider. The size, the price, the build quality, the performance, there's really nothing I can knock on this lens whatsoever. I mean, it'd be nice to have a, a VR switch on this. That would be nice, or at least functionality into the uh, function buttons here. Maybe that will come, as I mentioned earlier, in a firmware update, who knows? but it is something to take note of. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the 800 uh, 6.3 VRS base Fresnel Element Super Telephoto Lens. Let me know your thoughts. Is this a lens you're looking to pick up? Any questions you have, I'll try to answer those for you. As I mentioned earlier, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, hit that notification bell. More great content is coming your way. Take care, guys. Stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.